truth tables are one of the, the cooler things we can do in logic. What they enable us to do is to take statements, and since we're talking, as the title says, about negation, conjunction, or disjunction, we're taking compound statements, and we're going to completely observe and verify whether these statements are true and false, depending on whether the initial statement, P and Q, are true or false. The idea behind a truth table is you work out every possibility, and then you can see what's going to happen no matter what. And this is one of the first times, I think, in math that you're able to see the fact that it doesn't matter what my statement P is, every statement is either true or false. And if it's true, then we know something about it. If it's false, we know something else about it. And so you can build up these forms. And this is what leads to the, the standard logical arguments that exist. Um, if you go onto Wikipedia and look up logical arguments or common fallacies and whatnot, there's a lot of uh, thought and philosophy put into this sort of thing. So this is actually quite cool. You can see what has to be true, what doesn't have to be true. And it's truth tables that lead to the ability to solve all those awesome uh, word problems that always mess with people's heads, I think. You know, you're on the island of truth and lies, and the tribe of truth only tells the truth, and the tribe of lies only lies and they always lie, and then you meet two people and you say, which is the safe path to take? It's, it's one of those logic puzzles like that. So this is what we've got. So first of all, let's talk about negation. If I have the statement P, the negation of P is gonna be not P. If P is true, then not P is false, because it's the opposite. If P is false, then not P is true. Truth tables come in a couple of uh, standard shapes. The first part of these shapes is, observe this far left column. I have the P statement. It's either true or false. You always build up the leftmost columns based on every possibility. And then, when you start doing negation, conjunction, or disjunction, this forces things to happen on the right side. So this is negation. Conjunction, remember we use the, the word and for conjunction, but it could also be the word but, any of these joining things. So let's look at how I build up this far left side. The statement P, it can either be true or false, but I have more than one statement going on here. I've got the P statement and the Q statement. Because of that, I want to create every possibility. So there can be true, true. There can be true, false. It could be false, true, or false, false. This gets me every possible combination of P and Q. Look how I build up this leftmost side. I know there's four possibilities. P has two possibilities, Q has two. Two times two gives me four. There's four possibilities total. So I make P be true twice, I make P be false twice, because there's four possibilities. Then, once I know P is true twice, well, Q can either be true or false each of those times. And once I know that P is false twice, Q is gonna be either true or false each of those times. And then here's what I've got. When I say P and Q, the statement, the, con the, the combined statement, the compound statement, P and Q, is going to be true when both the left side and the right side are true, because that's what and means. So if P is true and Q is true, then my statement P and Q will be true. Otherwise, at every point of the game, it's false. Q's false. True and a false, that's still a false, because one side didn't work. False and true, again, one side didn't work, so it's false. And if they're both false, well, then the whole statement is false as well. The compound statement is. So this is and, conjunction. Lastly, in section 3.3, we're talking about truth tables you can build up with disjunction. Again, there's P's and there's Q's. So that means I have two possibilities, true or false, for each of them, and there's two of them, so I get myself two times two. There's four possibilities total. And again, I go to true, true, false, false. And then I make P go true, false, true, false. That way there's each one of the possibilities. True, 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 false, false, true, false, false. For or, because that's what disjunction is, you can have left or right or both. Here I've got both. Left and right were true. That gets me a true statement. You can have left or right. I got left, so that gives me the true. 
left or right. This time the right part's true. Q is true. So that gets me my whole statement true. It's only when both sides are false that my disjunction statement becomes false. So using these three things as my building blocks, let's talk about this statement right here. I've got not P and Q and R. That's my combined statement. Let me first build out my leftmost columns. I have three statements that are going on here. I've got the P statement, I've got the Q statement, and I have the R statement. There's two possibilities for each of them, true or false. There's three things, so I get two times two times two. That gives me eight total possibilities. What can happen? Well, P is going to be either true or false. I make the one on the far left be everything in one block. So there's eight different possibilities for P, and I'll make the first four true. I'll make the second four false. Now for Q, what can happen? Well, Q can either be true or false, but if I do this same first four are true, that's going to give me some uh, incorrect things. I'm not going to get all the possibilities that I might get. So instead for Q, I'm going to break it up into groups of two. Since I grouped the P in groups of four, I'll half that for Q. So I have true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then R is going to do what Q used to do when I just had these two statements. R could be true, R could be false, R could be true, R could be false, true, false, true, false. This gets me all eight of the possibilities. They could all be true. I could have true, true, false, true, false, true, and so on until I get myself all the way down to false, false, false. It's like trying to break a combination lock by spinning through every possible combination. What I'm trying to get myself is not P and Q and R. To get this, I'm going to build this up in pieces. First, let's talk about P and Q. Well, I know what P and Q is. It depends on P and Q, and I've already got my truth table right here that tells me all about this. For P and Q, when I've got true and true, that gets me a true statement. Notice this P and Q statement, it doesn't care what R is doing, so I kind of ignore the R column for the moment. P and Q, again, I've got true, true, so that gets me true. Now for P and Q, I have true, false, so that's false. True, false, that's false. False, true, it's false. False, true, it's false. False, 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 false. This makes sense. In general, an AND statement is going to be more false than it is true. Now once I've got this, now I stick it inside parentheses and I do negation on it. Well, what happens with negation? Whatever's in the left column, it switches to the opposite. So I have true, true here. That gets me false, false. And all these falses down this row, down this column, are going to now turn to trues. They're going to turn to trues because this is negation. It takes whatever's in this column and flips it. Now at the end, I just have to decide what's happening on this whole left side and what's happening on the right. So let me go through and highlight the columns that I'm talking about here. So let's see. I've got this R column, and I also have the not P column. These are the two columns I'm looking at. This final statement is an AND statement. For it to be true, both the left and the right sides have to be true. Here the left side's false. That tells me right away that this is going to be false. Here the left side's false. Again, right away I know false. Here I've got true and true. That makes the whole thing true. Here I've got true, but I've got a false here. That makes the whole thing false. Again, I have a true and true. That gets me another true value. Here I've got a true on the left side, but on the right side I have a false. For this R, I've got a false here, which makes the whole statement false, the compound statement false. Again, true and true. And finally, true, but there's a false over here on the R side. And since there's a false on the left, right side, it's going to get me a false overall. So this gets me my overall 
picture of what's happening. So now that I've built up my truth table and I've got my final answer in this far right column, now I know what's going on. If I have the statement, it is not true that P and Q occurs and R is happening, then I know if P and Q are true and R is true, well, what's happening? The whole statement ends up being false. I, if I know that P is true and Q is false and R is true, then this whole statement ends up being true. So I can learn things about the whole statement based on its shape. And now I can go back in and plug in for P, Q, and R any statement that I like. In our last section, I used stuff from a song by Pink. It doesn't matter what statements I'm plugging into P, Q, and R. It can go into that. And I can figure out whether it's each statement is true or false. And then I can tell you what the compound statement overall is going to be. So this is if I build up the whole truth table. This lets me see exactly how anything that fits into this shape, no matter whether I grab it from a song by Pink or a song by Britney Spears or even something by Miley Cyrus, it doesn't matter what statements I plug in here. Once I've evaluated each statement based on its truth or falsehood, then I can figure out what the compound statement's going to do. But sometimes you don't want to go through and do one entire statement. Um, and creating a huge truth table. Sometimes you just have these single statements. So we can have a shorter shortcut to deal with this. So let's look at my same statement that I have over there on the left truth table, but let's analyze it here on the right just for one single thing. I've built up the general statement shape and I happen to know some things. I know that P and R are false. So what I'm gonna do here to quickly evaluate this is plug in for P and R, I'm gonna plug in the letters false. And then for Q, I'm going to plug in true, because maybe I happen to know that the Q statement is true. So I first do that plug in here. Next, I evaluate these things one piece at a time, working your way from inside the parentheses out. If I have the statement false and true, I know something about that. That statement overall is false, because and has to have trues on both sides of it for and to be true. So I put a false in here. This is almost like working an equation. It's working a logic equation. If I have the opposite, the negation of a false statement, well, the negation of a false statement is true. So that puts me having a true on the left. And finally, again, I'm reduced to just having and, true and false. That's going to leave me with false. But let's look at something here. I knew that P and R were false, but Q was true. Let's look over here on my truth table and make sure that my final answer that I got, which was false, is actually the right one. If P is false, I know I'm down here on the bottom part of the P column. Q was true, which told me I was in this spot right here. And then I knew that R was false, which put me in this line here. So I had false, true, false was my QR pattern. If I follow this across, Sure enough, it tells me my answer is false. If I had already built up the whole truth table, I wouldn't have to do this little analysis right here. But if I'm just trying to get one single set of answers, because I know that my three statements are false, false, and true, then I can evaluate the statement right away without building up the whole truth table. I get by doing that by just basically going through this one single row. I don't have to do all the other seven. So that's truth tables, negation, conjunction, disjunction. Again, go on to Blackboard, look at the textbook examples for this section, work through them with a pencil and paper till you understand. Send me emails if you're having any questions, and then you're ready to go on to Math Excel and work on the homework.